The Micra Leadless Pacemaker uh, was FDA approved last year based on the results from the investigational trial. As you know, most of the investigational trial have restrictions on physicians who can be part of it and also restrictions on patients who could be enrolled in the study. The results of the investigation trial were encouraging, but the question remain, does these encouraging results, will re do they remain true in the real world population and in the hands of new operators? And the MICRA post-approval registry was really designed to answer this question. And um, it's enrolled more than 790 patients with 150 operators from around 20 countries and 96 different centers. The design, it's a prospective uh, registry that enrolled all comers, any patients who was offered to be implanted with a leadless pacemaker and met the clinical indication for a single lead pacemaker was offered to be part of this registry. And as I mentioned, 795 patients were enrolled and the plan is to follow these patients up to nine years. So the findings that were presented today at the Heart Rhythm Society were acute safety results. Um, they were very interesting finding. Uh, the major finding were that the implant success rate was 99.6%. Out of 795 attempted implant, 792 were successful. The rate of major complications over the first 30 days post-implant was low at 1.5%. Very importantly, what was noted is the low rate of pericardial effusion, low rate of infection. There was really one infection treated with antibiotic, one dislodgement where the device remained adherent to the right ventricle. It was recaptured and repositioned at a later date. There was one pericardial effusion that met the predefined definition of a major complication, but there were two overall that required pericardiocentesis. The rate is 0.13% for pericardial effusion and 0.26% when you count the two that required drainage. So leadless pacemakers are promising therapy that promises to reduce complications seen with transvenous pacemaker. As you know, most complications seen with transvenous pacemakers are related to the presence of a transvenous lead and a subcutaneous pocket. The results from the MICRA IDE study reinforce the positive data seen in the investigational trial. And I do believe based on these early results adoption of a leadless pacemaker will increase and will help reduce complications seen with typical transvenous pacemakers. So uh, the results of this study are mainly acute results, so early results. It will be very interesting to see how these devices perform five years down the road or nine years down the road. And the MICRA post-approval registry is designed to follow up these patients for up to nine years post-implant and the results I believe would be very interesting once they are available.